Well, uh, good evening to you all and uh, welcome to our sixth broadcast from uh, from uh, Warrington Borough Council, where we attempt to give an update on the COVID pandemic and its implications for, for you, for your business and your loved ones. Um, last week we launched a daily a public dashboard called Beat the Bug. The idea is that every day we update the, the dashboard so we can look at the number of live cases numbers, the number of hospitalizations and regrettably the number of deaths from COVID. So if you want an update on the numbers and the trends, please look at that dashboard. The idea behind it, if we can all work hard and change our behaviours in order to drive the numbers down, it'll make a real difference, possibly after December the 2nd when the current lockdown period ends. The latest numbers from yesterday, we have 418 COVID positive cases per 100,000 people in the town. That's a reduction from last week of from 460. In terms of the hospital admissions, uh, there are 179 people currently in our local hospital with COVID related symptoms. And there were about 179 people, 79 of them actually Warrington residents because the, the uh, hospital covers Halton and of course Warrington. 30% of the beds in our local hospital are currently occupied with people who are patients who have got COVID related symptoms. Number of deaths, very sad and tragic. Um, in the summer, the death, death numbers are very low, uh, but, but since October, there's been a spike in the number of deaths. And the seven days uh, to today, the total number was 14, but that's been added to actually over the weekend by another eight deaths who've just been notified uh, some time ago. So the number of deaths of people in our communities is sadly still very uh, stubborn and very strong. This is a different broadcast tonight. We're having a question and answer session and I've invited along Councillor Russ Bowden, leader of the council, you know, to talk about some of the issues from his perspective as the leader of the town politically. I also invited another community leader, Steve Price, who's the head coach at Warrington Wolves. Steve came over here three years ago and brought his family with him. He lives in Warrington and he, he knows Warrington well. Uh, when he comes on, you'll see there's a large wave behind him. You can get those waves on a good windy day on the ship canal. <laughs> so I'm going to, it's this question and answer uh, tonight, colleagues. I, I'm not really Adam Hills and I'm certainly not uh, Jonathan Ross, but I'm trying to put this event together with a different style of approach. So this is question and answers. The questions have come in from members of the public. So the first question to you, Steve Price, um, is from Ruth in Birchwood. How have you and the team responded to the pandemic? And how have you managed to keep them motivated? I mean, we know it's very disruptive. It's been difficult. And indeed, the players have had to take a wage cut as well. So have you managed to keep them motivated, Steve? Yeah, great question there, Steve. And welcome, every, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's, it's, it's been tough uh, since March when, when, we, when, we, when we went into lockdown. Um, but we're very fortunate that we've got an you know, outstanding uh, coaching group and, and, and playing group who you know, really care for each other. Um, and one of the things we always talk about is, is gratitude and, and um, you know, always looking out for each other, helping each other, whether it's uh, family, friends, um, neighbours, um, you know, people who live in your streets. So, you know, we always talk about gratitude and always trying to, you know, make a difference in people's lives and, and, and take, an, take an interest. Um, so that's that's been um, very receptive. Um, so, yeah, um, it's, it's been hard with the cancellations and, you know, the, the, the fourth where I think we've had two cancellations and we've had, had, a, had a forfeit. But, um, you know, we've got, a, we've got an obligation to, you know, keep the game afloat and, and still be able to get remuneration and, 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 and payments. So that, that's, a, that's a stimulus for, you know, the players to be able to um, stay on task and be able to, um, you know, do the jobs to the best of, best of their ability. So we've still got, um, you know, remuneration coming into the game. So uh, somebody once said to me, Steve, uh, it's a young squad and young young men will do what young men do. Have you had any issues in terms of sometimes having to remind them about their behaviours and, uh, and the arrangements around COVID and the restrictions? Yes, yeah, certainly, Steve. Um, you know, being young men um, and, and the way it is at the moment, there are very strict, um, you know, protocols in place, but they are young men and um, they're not always perfect, let's be honest. And, you know, we've had to, you know, wrap a few over the over the knuckles here and there, but you know, predominantly and majority of the time they've they've been class. You know, I'm not going to say here that they 
they've been A1 um, because I think, you know, the world is in, in that same situation of having been either. So, um, but, you know, majority of the time they're doing their best they can and, um, you know, in, in these difficult times. At least a bit easier for you not have Breezy and Westwood in your squad this time to deal with it, have you? So that wouldn't be a challenge. Another question for you, Steve. This is from uh, uh, this this is from uh, Anton who lives in in uh, Grappen Hall. Uh, Covid has brought considerable family stress. I think you'll know that, Steve, with your family. And how have you dealt with that within the team? The team are all members of a family. They've got their own families. How have you dealt with that? Yeah, it just it goes back to you know. Providing mechanisms, you know, for you know, family and the and the, and the team, and and it's about, um, you know, we go back to gratitude again, um, you know, and trying to eliminate that stress, and um, you know, we talk about, um, especially at our family, um, when we come home and sitting around the dinner table, we talk about three things: what we're very fortunate for the day. Um, we feel that that um, by communicating and, and talking to each other feels like that um, eliminates. You know a lot of um, outside noise and, and, and stress you you could say what people talk about so um, yeah you're talking about you know three things what we're very grateful for and fortunate for to be able to um, you know do what we do and and, and, and and live in this great great town. Thanks I think Russ has got a question for you now Steve. Russ you've got a question for our coach. Uh, I have yeah and thanks for joining us tonight um, Steve. Um, I think throughout this crisis we've seen um, a lot of people um, uh, developing uh, 2020 uh, hindsight and um, obviously people have uh, taken real interest in what's going on with uh, with the COVID situation. Um, if you were the Prime Minister what would you have been prioritising and uh, would you have done anything differently? Just interested in your perspective really. You get this right you can be the Prime Minister Steve. Yeah. Um, I feel I'm better looking than big bad Boris but uh, uh, he, he, you know it's, it's, a, it's a difficult Difficult time for him, um, you know. With the, you know, for the decisions and whatever decision he, he's he's making, I'm sure he's going to get criticised criticised whether it's right or wrong. So, um, you know, when when I first came out in March with the pandemic, I, if I was prime minister for the day, I would I would have shut down the uh, the borders and the airport straight away. Um, you know, I felt felt like they they uh, dragged on for too too long. Um, if you look back on the other side of the world in Australia, they shut the borders and. And airports down straight away. I understand that you know we're, we're a different climate and all that kind of stuff, but I thought that would have reduced the risk um, a lot earlier. Um, so yeah, and also to just get back to working and rebuilding the economy, I think is is, is really important. So you've still got family back in Australia, Steve. You must hear about how it's been handled there. So the New Zealand seems to have been a good example of how to handle it well. Any lessons from Australia from your folks back home there? Yeah, I feel that they, um, they 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 got it early early Steve. They um, they haven't got a you know they got warm weather over there at the moment. We got you know colder weather and you know we've got nearly triple the amount of population here than what Australia have. So it is quite hard to compare. But you know I felt that they they just got onto it a lot quicker and shut the borders down. Um, you know from 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 the get go. So that was the biggest biggest lesson learned. But um, yeah, it's, it's one of those ones. I'll ask you a question now, Russell, this may mean we use up all the rest of the programme. If you were Prime Minister, what would you have prioritised? What would you have done differently, Russell? Oh, so wow. That's, 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 that's a politician, if that's possible. Seriously, put me on the spot there. I, I think it's uh, I think it's really easy to be um, to be critical of, uh, of our leaders and, and what they've done. And, you know, I guess the question I'd always say is, well, you know, at that time, faced with the same information, um, what could you possibly have done differently? I think, um, you know, look at the financial package that was put together by government. I don't think many people could have criticised that in terms of protecting jobs and supporting businesses. And obviously that's just become harder and harder um, as time's gone on. I think my probably my main criticism would be, be around communication, around clarity of, of rules. And I think quite often, you know, the people have been confused. But I would say, you know, the majority of the population have tried to stick to the rules and the regulations, um, uh, you know, and for that, I think we've got to we've got to give them credit. I think um, the government's been in an incredibly difficult position. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we've seen with the second wave, there was the opportunity to go into lockdown earlier. 
I think, you know, if you, if you say you're going to be led by the science, then you need to prove that and do it every time, not just when the science um, backs up, you know, your own, uh, your own views. So um, we're in a difficult position now. We're heading, you know, close to Christmas. These current lockdown measures get reviewed on the 2nd of December and, and clearly people have got a lot of concern about, about what comes after that. But it comes down to clarity um, of purpose, clarity of message, clarity of communication. Um, and, you know, like as I said, it's easy to be critical, but um, it's, it's always harder to be constructive and, and, and offer the alternative. You mentioned business, uh, Russ, and people's livelihoods and jobs. Um, uh, what's the council going to be doing in conjunction with government to help businesses in the next two, two to three weeks, please? Um, well, obviously, with the uh, original move into tier three, uh, which got overtaken by national lockdown, and then we'd negotiated a, a financial package with the government um, to support businesses and jobs here in Warrington. So we, although we haven't actually received the cash as yet, uh, we're promised £4.2 million pounds of funding um, for the hospitality and leisure sector in particular. We've spent the last week and a half uh, developing that scheme. Communication about that scheme, who's eligible, uh, what the grants uh, um, could be in terms of you know, size and, uh, and amount um, will be communicated over the next couple of days starting today. And we're going to have that scheme uh, operational live from Wednesday. And what's really important is that local businesses uh, look at the council website, they understand their eligibility and they get those applications in in good time. We will do our bit then in terms of processing those applications as quickly as we can and ensure that we get the money to those businesses that desperately need it. Thanks Russ. <clears throat> uh, question for I you just, Steve. On, I'd, Steve. Just like to jump, I'd just like to jump in there. I I, th I thought it was class by what everyone was doing around the town with the NHS, like in, even in, in the north of England, like every Thursday night where they go outside and and um, a round of applause for the NHS. I, I thought that was just class on, you know, everyone who took part and, you know, without the NHS, I don't know where we would be, but yeah, you know, I, was, I, was, I was really, um, you know, chuffed when everyone used to go out there and, and out in the street and talk to each other and, and, and just a round of applause, it was, it was A1. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Uh, question from Andy and Latchford for you, Steve. Um, what are your ambitions for the team for the rest of the season? Obviously, it starts on Thursday. Um, we play Hull at home, but what's your ambitions for the rest of the season, Steve? Yeah, so if you look in the in my backdrop, um, you know, there's a big wave in the in behind me. And as a coaching group, we always talk about chasing that perfect wave, and and that perfect wave wave is the 27th of uh, November, Friday in, in Hull. And, you know, since we've come together in, in pre-season, we always set down, you know, team goals um, and where we want to, what we want to achieve. And, you know, our, our ultimate goal is, you know, to, you know, lift that Super League trophy um, on the 27th of November. And have we achieved that perfect way yet? No, we haven't, but we're chasing it. And that's our ultimate goal. Thanks, uh, uh, Steve. Um, question for you, Russ. Uh, uh, Mr Dodd from Fairfield. Has asked, asked, he was a bit surprised to see a large number of people around the cenotaph on uh, Sunday. Was this an official or unofficial event, Russ? He asks. Uh, thank you, Stephen, and, and thanks for the question. Um, I think first off, you know, it'd be clear that it was it was an unofficial event. Um, the council had to make a really difficult decision um, in relation to COVID um, about Remembrance Sunday, and I know how important Remembrance Sunday is to so many people here in Warrington, um, whether they be ex-service people themselves or, or their families. Um, and it is absolutely, a, you know, one of the key events uh, in our civic calendar. Residents will know um, the site of the Cenotaph at Bridgefoot. It's a, the, those services are always very well attended. Um, it is a difficult site to manage, you know, particularly around um, traffic. Um, but also um, in terms of managing the number of people. And what was clear to us was that uh, with the COVID restrictions, the council could not organise um, a safe event that we could class as COVID secure um, in the current climate. You'd also uh, perhaps be aware that as an alternative, we'd set up a civic event at St Elphin's Church. Um, that with the um, national lockdown because we couldn't hold an event in a, in a place of worship. 
that was really tough. And and obviously government advice and the advice of the Royal British Legion um, was asking people to stay at home, to go on their doorstep and to observe two minute silence in that way. It appears that um, an event was staged yesterday, no doubt by well-meaning people um, who you know, tried to step into that space created by the council's decision not to, to hold an event. Um, unfortunately, um, it looks as if that event didn't comply with the regulations. Um, there is specific criteria about who could stage an event, who could attend, um, the role of the public, um, advertising the event, and in particular, um, making it a COVID secure event, including, for example, contact tracing. It is possible that that um, event in itself could have uh, a negative impact on the COVID situation here in, the Warren in Warrington. And I think given how hard Warrington residents have worked, how hard the council has worked and other partners, uh, particularly um, in our um, NHS and our hospital, that would be you know, an unfortunate outcome from that event. As I said, probably well-meaning with all the right intent, um, but quite clearly against the guidance uh, that's been provided. I have asked um, uh, yourself, Stephen, to look at it from the council's perspective. And obviously we've uh, involved the police in relation to um, the specifics of what happened yesterday, who organised the event, how it was run, uh, and indeed, you know, um, whether or not there are uh, lessons that need to be learned from it. I think that's probably all I need to say on the on the matter. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much. Um, so move to you now, Steve. Um, so what advice should you offer the public of Warrington going forward, particularly to December the 2nd? What advice, if you're coaching this town, what would you say to them? You wouldn't swear up because I've never heard you swear. Yeah. Can you friend. just repeat that? Can yeah. you repeat that? Story? Yeah, right. If you were the coach of Warrington as a town, uh, what would, how would you coach the public until December the second? What advice and coaching strategy would you have between now and December the second, the end of the lockdown? We hope. Yeah, I'd, I'd just reinforce about one day at a time, not not get ahead of, ahead of ourselves. Um, just keep remaining vigilant in in, in every every day. Um, small. Um, connect with people. Um, you know, we challenge, um, you know, as a, as a family members that to give three people three people a phone call a day, um, whether it's overseas or our family around Warrington, and and connect and 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 really, uh, you know, take an interest in their their day to day life. I think that's really that's really important, uh, whether it's FaceTime or, or Zooms, um, and also to you know, spending quality time with your family. Um, you know, whether it's board games or or, or movies or, or little hidden walks. I think that's, um, you know, that's really important. But, you know, just picking up the phone um, and, and, and really um, taking the interest in, in people and, and, and really caring about each other, I think is, is really important. And, you know, we talk about Warrington, but, um, you know, to do things, we need to do it as a team to make improvements. Um, you know, we can't be selfish. You know, we've got to be united. And if we are, you know, really, um, you know, diligent in that, then we'll pull through these tough times. And doing things selfishly is not going to help think, help the cause. Um, we need we need to look out for each other, stick by the rules, um, you know, what the government's out, outlined, and and we'll overcome this, um, you know, this uh, cruel disease. Thanks, Steve. Ross, your advice. Um, I think, you know, Steve has, has pretty much captured it in terms of the message we've tried to give to residents throughout. We know this is, you know, really tough on us. We've been, you know, we've been asking residents to step up to the mark for the last seven months. And, you know, for the for the vast majority of them, they've done exactly that. Times have been really difficult. You know, it is stressful not being able to see your family and friends. Um, but, you know, Steve's right. You know, that doesn't stop you staying in touch. I think a lot of people have, you know, discovered um, house party, Zoom, Teams, all those kind of things, you know, which are just allowing people to, to stay in touch. And, and that's really, really important that we continue to support um, each other. The message, you know, doesn't get any easier. You know, we've, we're now in national lockdown. Who knows what happens on the 2nd of December? But it's only by doing the things that we're asked to do, being responsible for ourselves and others um, and 
obviously for our community at large that we're going to get through this. Hopefully, as you said, Stephen, there's some signs that the numbers are, are getting under control now, but we just can't afford to take our foot off the gas. We've got to make sure we drive those numbers down uh, and protect um, lives here in, in, in Warrington. That's that's the absolute key message from me. OK, gents, any question you'd like to ask of me, please, to make this interactive? No, uh, question of each other? <laughs> I'm asking why supports Manchester City, Steve. Um, why, why does Russ support Manchester City? Why, why, why do I? No, why does he? Why do you support, Sue? Uh, Russ who supports them. I probably ruin, ruin election chances now saying that, Russ. But, uh, yeah, you, you probably have, Stephen. Thank you. Um, I, don't, I don't know why that's a question of interest to the people of Warrington, but um, uh, it, go, it goes back a long time. And, uh, you know, I, I used to go and watch City when they were um, in the old third division. And I've been to some absolutely horrific places going and watching them home and away. So, uh, um, yeah, I suppose we could ask you why you support Notts County, couldn't we? But That's my hometown there. Uh, hometown. <laughs> Taken out by my father, but I couldn't see over the wall. And there's always a policeman. I had to look around him as well. So you're, you like football, Steve, don't you? Who do you support, Liverpool? Yeah, no, I'm a City supporter, Steve. I, um, oh, very good. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm a City supporter. Was, um, I thought we were a bit unlucky yesterday. We kept the broom with his penalty, penalty goal miss, but... Um, yeah, when I when I come over here, and I think it was two fourteen, um, me and my wife we went down and watched uh, Arsenal and, and City in a um, you know one of those preseason friendlies, and I just signed to be um, to work with the Cronulla Sharks, and they were blue, black, and white, and uh, and uh, so we thought we'd just get on get on board with City. But um, yeah, I've taken a really really uh, interest to the to the game. I've had the opportunity to meet Pep and and their staff, so it's uh, it's been it's been great. Thanks, Steve. So, Ross, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for giving your time uh, tonight. And uh, have a have a pleasant week, please. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone.